everyone who comes on, we hammer them about China. I, I really think that you you're going to be nice to me today, Larry. Right? We're going to be nice. No, we don't hammer them. We just we want them to to, to tell us all the yeah. uh, all the effects on their business about China. And a lot of a lot of times, it's not necessarily that big a deal. With you, I think it's it, it it could be, it could be really good or really bad for you. I think. Well, I think first of all, you have to understand that our our business in China is still relatively small. Yeah. I mean, it's less than 4% of our business. So the impact on that side is, is less severe and has the potential to be. But we, we have great relationships there. I've had meetings here with Chinese customers and Chinese officials, uh, just continuing the discussions that we've had going on over the last several years. Uh, the tariff situation, my point was, look, they, we navigated the 10% tariffs. But if, if we hit 25, and I've had this conversation, then you know, the ability to pass all that through to our customers, we're probably going to be less likely to do that. So we're going to we're going to have to preserve our financial model. So we'll have to look at where we cut. And I just hate to think about cutting innovation and R&D at a time right now where 5G and all these emerging technology areas are so important to the country. Of the emerging technologies, I, I'm reading about Internet of Things with, with Cisco. I never thought you'd be. I don't know, doing oil pipeline feedback and all these subscription type services. <laughs> it would change yeah. your whole revenue model, wouldn't it, if it, if it works? Well, they're two separate things. I mean, the, the, the connectivity in the mines and on, on uh, drilling platforms in the ocean and being able to, to see problems before they exist or actually understand the depth of the problem without having to send a human in to actually put them at risk to go figure out what it is so that you can begin to solve the issue. That technology, just that connectivity just presents so much opportunity. Right. The business model shift that we've been making to software and subscriptions is one that we're, you know, we're, we're probably 30%, 40% into it at this point. And, and so far, it's been, uh, it's been pretty successful for us. So to, I mean, and I'm also hearing, you know, everybody's talking about digitizing everything you do. What the, what it, explain that in, in layman's terms. That means connecting everything in the world and leveraging technology to do Basically, Securely, every process I guess, in your business. Too, Securely, is, that that's, that's somewhat important as well. Yeah. So it's a look. At, the bottom line is that I've been talking to a lot of my peers here, um, and in the midst of all of this discussion about a potential slowdown, you know, I, I joked last week. It's like, and, and I've heard some of my peers say we're, we're at risk of talking ourselves into something, even though we understand there are a lot of geopolitical risks. But the reality is, is that the role technology is playing today particularly in a B2B world, even versus where it was before the financial crisis, is completely different. You know, I would characterize it as before the financial crisis, companies would build their strategy, and then they would tell the technology teams to go operationalize it with whatever tech you needed to, to do. And today, they're defining their strategy based on the integration of technology and what it allows them to actually do differently as a business. It's just a, fun, it's a, it's a subtle but really fundamental difference. And so as we enter this, this time of risk, and we're trying to figure out what does that mean for tech companies during this, during a, if we do see a cycle. You know, Chuck, I, I think about the volatility in the markets, and then I think about Oracle and, and kind of its inherent DNA. Uh, Oracle's done 208 acquisitions since it came into existence, 30 since you became CEO back in 2015. When you look at market volatility, does that make you think, great, there are more bargains out there, more things that I can go after? Or do you think, okay, I've still got six acquisitions from last year that I need to focus on? Yeah, you know, it's, we don't see, um, there aren't any acquisitions that we're looking at waiting for them to get more, you know, cost effective, get them cheaper. That, that's not really the case. There, I mean, the last three years, the, the run up, if there was anything of interest three years ago, it's definitely not going to come back to a place where it might be of interest today. I, I just don't think that's conceivable. But one of the things that I really wanted to drive starting three and a half years ago, and I can't believe I'm in my fourth year in this job already, yeah. um, was really to drive up the level of innovation, the internal organic innovation inside the company. And we've done that. Uh, and so we're, we're doing a lot of small tech acquisitions, a lot of really strategic ones. We just bought Luxterra just recently. Uh, so I think you'll still see us to do it. I in the bolt-on kind of category on the, or in the let's even shift the portfolio? Uh, a lot of what we're building right now is, is enhancing our core franchises. One of the things I really wanted to do is stabilize and grow our core franchises. If you're a mature business and you look at your core franchises, you have one of two things. You can either believe they're going to grow or you can use the profits 
from those right. to actually fund different businesses. I believe they could grow, and we're proving that right now, and they are growing again because we drove innovation back into our core. At the same time, we are able to use some of those profits to, to invest more in cybersecurity and our collaboration architecture and other areas, IoT, and many of the other spaces that we're playing in. Is the government shut down material yet to you? Not yet. I mean, clearly, we end our quarter this week, so, you know, there's nobody there to place orders. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that just inherently is an issue, but I don't think that uh, from an how, overall How big a business is the U.S. government in terms of a client of yours, revenue-wise? Uh, it is um, significant. Significant? Yeah, yeah. It, it matters. It, is that we're a, able ten, to navigate? Ten percent of your business is, is no. It's not that. It's not I that. Mean, in, the, in the analyst okay. notes, uh, you unfortunately make the list of companies that that uh, not not the timing as much as just the exposure to the contracts. And, and yeah, but I, I I personally think that you know, it, well, I believe for no reason whatsoever other than hope and optimism and just you know, right. that they're going to get to some closure. To. They have yeah, to. It, it has to. You can't if for no other reason. Guys say, not getting paid. 800,000 people. We see them showing yeah. up at, at homeless shelters now. We see TSA agents showing up at food banks. Yeah. I mean, this is just not right. The, the tax reform was, uh, was good for Cisco. It was. One shot deal. Is it good this year for you again? Well, clearly we had, we had the year over year benefit of the slightly lower tax rate. I mean, the multinational tech companies didn't right. see a significant tax rate differential. So I think we saw a point and a half, two points, perhaps. Um, so Repatriation? I mean, are you able to, I mean, you have more money to do what you want to do? We do, but we never had an issue before never because before we was, had, yeah. with the debt markets where they were, we had access to plenty but of you capital. Hold on, but you campaigned for years. I mean, we used to have this conversation on this set. I did. About the need well, we wanted to, be access. To, re, to, to be able to repatriate and then what you were going to do with that, with that cash. And I said three things. M&A. M&A. Buybacks. And dividends. And dividends. Because we're not a capital intensive business. We've had this discussion several times. Raised the dividend, right? We did, and we've raised the buyback, Just and very, we've done M&A. Very quickly, you said the debt markets weren't at a position where they were meant that you didn't need to use Well, no, no, I said they were very attractive. Very attractive, right. But so we could, could do synthetic tense. repatriation. They still are. Well, still, they still are, yeah. but just not quite. But, yeah. I mean, we would do what people call synthetic repatriation by borrowing against our assets sure. outside the United States. So, so if you use AI with IoT... Are you going to be able to tell me before a pipeline fails? I mean, will you know? Yes. Yeah? yeah. 2001. Cool. Remember? Yeah. That's how we knew how had lost his marbles. It was because he said something was going to fail and it didn't fail. That's cool. Right? Well, what you, I mean, look, we're, we're not going to do it alone. We're going to do it with the industrial players who have the intelligence, but we're going to connect it and help them get the data to the right place in a timely fashion. Then they're going to have the algorithms. Uh, but if you think about what we're really going to do, I know you have to go, but the like security, cybersecurity is going to be nothing but machine learning and AI running in the network because no one has a perimeter anymore.